Much like many are holding out hope for a live-action Batman Beyond movie, I'm holding out hope for the perfect Batman Beyond figure. Because we have yet to get it. I would say I felt pretty accomplished with myself after acquiring the Bruce Wayne and Ace Gold Label San Diego Comic Con exclusive McFarlane Toys or Slash DC Direct figure from that convention. I really felt kind of purposeful as far as my attendance to the convention, getting an exclusive and kind of walking away with that euphoric feeling of being able to grab something that was only available there at least in this interpretation. I understand that we've had this version of the figure before as far as a DC Direct or DC Collectibles release a few years back and along with it technically there was a Batman Beyond DC Direct figure that was bundled in a two-pack or I guess you could argue it to be a three-pack but we never got a concrete release of the Batman Beyond animated series figure, save for a McFarlane Toys version, a proper DC Multiverse 7-inch scale figure that some people, for the most part, generally like, except it's got its own quirks, its own problems, some of which are kind of always tethered to the McFarlane Toys brand, so it may not rub everybody the best way. So McFarlane Toys have opted to take a page from what they've been doing recently, which is to go back to that DC Direct well, and simply just kind of repackage, rebrand those original figures and release them under the McFar McFarlane Toys banner. And we got another either release or casualty, depending on how you want to look at it, with the proper Batman Beyond Batman here. That is technically speaking the DC Direct label. So not to be confused with the McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse version that was released, I want to say, in 2021. So it's already been a good three years removed since that initial release. But this is not meant to be that version. This is meant to be the much more streamlined, and I guess you could argue this is the interpretation that's meant to be more faithful to the Bruce Timm cartoon as far as the angular look, the animation style, the way that all the proportions are kind of playing with each other. And that's cool and dandy, but you'll notice right here as I hold him with using my hand as kind of like to scale, you'll note that this is exactly meant to be some of those much more simpler, smaller figures that are taken from the DC Collectibles line. So in terms of where you fall as far as preference with the version of Batman Beyond that you want in figure form, it's really going to fall down to preference. And seeing as I was kind of surging with adrenaline when coming across this guy as a, I don't know if he's going to be a Walmart exclusive or he's going to be a wide release because even I have to admit, the release of this guy has been a little bit murky and the actual correspondence of information from McFarlane Toys has been murky at best. They said that it was coming soon, then it started to pop up in Walmarts when it came to some of those like wide releases of certain Platinum Chases, like the Bullseye Batman, the Hugo Strangest Batman, the proper color-corrected uh, Batfleck from The Flash. And so along with it came this DC Direct Batman Beyond. So people were wondering, okay, is this an exclusive to Walmart, a gold label exclusive? Is it going to get mass released? And then later they're like, oh yeah, it's starting to pop up in retailers. Okay, can you be a little bit more transparent? Because even I have to remark that it's been a little crazy as far as how to properly hunt this guy down. Now, having come across it, I feel like my sentiments of how I've been feeling about the DC Direct line are still being echoed here with Batman Beyond because I'm here to tell you that if you've already been kind of on the fence as far as how McFarlane has been treating the DC Direct line as far as the re-releases, the remasterings of sort, then I don't think anything has really changed here when it comes to a version of the Batman Beyond figure here because it most definitely has not changed for me. I'm not necessarily moved in any kind of direction with this guy. To kind of prove my point, here is, and I know it's going to be a little bit on camera because I had to move the camera a little lower to then cut out a little bit of the headroom when it comes to the DC Direct version, but you see that he really is dwarfed, not even pales in comparison, dwarfed, I want to use the word, dwarfed by the DC Multiverse 7-inch figure. You see right here that he's pretty much on the cusp of being just a little under 6 inches. And that's counting the ears. If you were to go to the top of the head, he's more so like a 5.5-inch a figure. And so you'll see right here that with McFarlane, you get, of course, the much more dynamic applications as far as the aesthetic, as far as the look, the style, with the musculature behind the legs, the limbs. Even though they still retrofitted this guy right here to be a bit of a slimmer Batman since Terry McGinnis was 
a little bit on the slimmer side when it comes to his much more agile physique and his fighting style. But they still managed to kind of chisel in a little bit of the musculature, the very huge bat, bat symbol right there on the front of his chest in red. But overall, I really dig the head sculpt, even though, like I said, it's still kind of retaining some characteristics where McFarlane kind of... He kind of goes into a realm where it's pseudo-realistic. Like, the head sculpt doesn't look as cartoony as it did in the Bruce Timm style. So, you're going to lose an awful lot of those trappings right here. But at least I feel like with Batman Beyond, you get the happy medium. You definitely didn't get it with the proper Batman animated series figure where the top half was just way too big. So, he was trying to flesh two different styles together, the McFarlane and the Bruce Timm, and it just didn't pan out. This is, in my opinion, just one of the finer examples where it did, in fact, work out. But in comparison, the DC Direct you'll see right here is most definitely just the animated style to where it could be a little bit of a fault. You got the like the V-shaped look to the chest area that is a bit uh, on the planar side, the bat symbol cutting across the entirety of the chest. But you'll see that he's definitely lacking a little bit of the definition. I do like that the belt is, like I said, a little bit more faithful to the way that he looked in the in the show itself. But at the same time, it's just much more of a smaller physique, a smaller tone, a smaller waist. Just everything just feels a little bit on the dainty side when it comes to this guy. A little bit lacking in that regard. And to me, I, it's interesting when he's kind of in this neutral pose. But when it comes to actually playing with the figure, feeling some kind of possibility, some kind of thing, it's kind of lacking a little bit of that showmanship. The only area where I have to admit it does look a bit more faithful to the way it looked like in the show versus that of McFarlane would most definitely be the head sculpt. I do like the angular look, pronounced uh, cheek and chin, while at the same time being able to have it be all completely black with a little bit of white for the teeth, the grimace of the teeth, as well as the eyes. The ears are a little bit more pointy and kind of off to the side, but again, it was a little bit more like that in the show versus that of the McFarlane. And everything else, like I said, just retains an awful lot of that DC Direct animated series look, but in this version i don't know and when you consider the fact that this guy retailed for i want to say about 24 dollars out the door from walmart that's not necessarily the worst price i feel like i would kind of harp on that a little bit more when it came to some of those other animated series figures like the new adventures 2 Face that was retailing for 30 bucks but you get a figure that just feels like i said so small and dainty and kind of lackluster in hand and even though this is arguably better it's just leaving a lot to be desired, and you can definitely feel that a little bit more when it comes to the articulation, which, being that this is much more of a DC Direct figure than the McFarlane one, it's going to be a little bit more on the basic side. For example, that cool head that I was talking about can definitely rotate 360 no problem and look up very nicely. It's actually quite snug and tight on the head, but very movable as far as the tilting side to side. Inclination downwards could have been a little bit better, but that's only because of how pronounced the chin it really is. But looking up is absolutely no problem. But similar to another figure that I kind of remarked when it comes to this specific reissues or repackages of the Batman Beyond stuff, you got that V-shape that I was talking about before that is hearkening to the Bruce Timm style. However, that style does not favor articulation when it comes to the shoulders because you'll notice that it's all shaped and kind of chiseled and sculpted in a V format. So when it comes to rotation uh, vertically 360, technically it could be done, but once you get to about that area right there, it just stops dead and starts to veer off towards the side. So you're not going to have any kind of vertical. It starts vertical and then kind of starts to kind of extend towards the sides, which definitely does good favors as far as demonstrating the extension that it could do on the hinge outwards like so, pretty much forming a T-pose. But just know that when it comes to rotation upwards, you can never really do it vertically. It's always going to throw itself off to the side due to the way that the shoulders and the overall way that this is all sculpted is designed. And that's unfortunate because, I mean, I'm sorry, there should be some kind of wiggle room to generate a different kind of uh, joint or hinge or some kind of contraption to allow something to be not as restrictive feeling as this v-shape that these dc direct figures often tend to do similar to some other dc direct figures you have the elbow joint where you have not only a hinge that bends 
mostly 90 degrees, but then it has the swivel at the top that allows the bottom of the forearm to rotate 360 degrees in place. And then, of course, you have the wrist joints that allow it to move the hand 360 all the way across like so, as well as the hinge inside that allows the hand to bend inwards and outwards. No real mid-torso cut of any kind, but you do have a waist cut that fully rotates 360. No problem, as you can see it right there, but no kind of crunch or extension or oblique crunching side to side of any kind. You could pretty much flat out forget about it, but you do have the top leg joints right there. So if you do want to be able to flex the feet, or I'm sorry, the legs forward, you can only do so about that far. Like I said, it's at the 45 degree angle rather than the 90. So I can't really go all the way up. Extension towards the back is actually the full 90. So a little bit of a contradiction there. I would have preferred the opposite if that was going to be the case. But you can see right there that they opted in for this joint that not only allows extension towards the back much more favorably for some unbeknownst reason. But then you have this cutout of a hinge, like an upside down hinge that allows the extension of the leg almost at the 180 degree angle. But because of the way that it's sculpted and molded out, you see right there that it's kind of cutting out the plastic. Now, thankfully, unlike some other DC Direct figures, this Batman Beyond is all black. So it kind of does a better job of masking all this whole area right here so it doesn't look as ugly. But it is it's still, in fact, present there. The knees can still bend at the 90 degree angle via the one hinge joint. It kind of feels like similar to the elbow. You should be able to move it. It feels like it should be able to move. But the reason why I'm scared to try it is because the way that this bottom leg is sculpted at the hinge, at the bend right here for the knee, it just feels like it's kind of contradicting itself. You know what I mean? Like these pieces on the sides are then grabbing the top to where if I were to try to rotate it, Something's going to happen. Something's going to break right there, and I do not want to risk it. And then the similar thing could be said about the ankle joints where you do have this hinge that allows the foot to bend downwards and upwards. But in terms of rotation, it can kind of pivot the foot inwards and outwards slightly, but it feels like I'm pressing my luck every time I try to do so. So I have a tendency to leave it alone. So you see how it's kind of frustrating that the articulation is pretty much limiting what you could be argued as one of the more agile versions of Batman, even when it's not Bruce Wayne. It's supposed to be Terry McGinnis, and he always had his very unique fighting style. So when you kind of cut in the way of that fighting style via posability, it is a little frustrating because you had other figures that were able to do a slightly better job, even though, like I said, it did come at the little bit of cost of cutting out a bit of the style that the Batman Beyond show was kind of known for, but at least you had the articulation. So, should this guy fall back on anything else, it should be those accessories. For the most part, though, they're pretty on the basic side, as well as the confusing side. You'll see what I mean right now in a bit. He does come with two rather cool-looking batarangs with the little red wings right there, but in the middle you, have, of course, have the very angular and spiky style to them that is very Batman Beyond-esque. And you can have him hold the batarangs with the two holding hands that you can swap out for the fisted hands that he comes with by default. But then over here... He's got not two, but four extra hands, two extra pairs. And you would think, okay, one of those pairs has to be the neutral, kind of semi-open hands, kind of relaxed. But then you have a second pair that almost looks identical. And I really emphasize on almost because to the naked eye, from a first glance, they really do look like they just doubled up a pair for some reason. Maybe it's like a spare in case you lose them because of how small they are. But if you look a little closely, you'll notice that some of them actually have the fingers molded and sculpted in a slightly more aggressive way. So one of the pairs is technically the relaxed pair of hands, and then the others are kind of clench semi-clenching just a little bit, which harkens back to the other recently released DC or repackaged DC Direct figure under the McFarlane Toys brand, which was the Bruce Wayne figure that I was kind of boasting about earlier that I acquired over at San Diego Comic-Con. He had the exact same thing kind of going on with some of his extra hand accessories as far as having some that kind of felt semi-open, but then the others were slightly closed a little bit more. And I'm sorry, but when that is the only subtle difference, I kind of prefer if you just throw in a completely different pair of hands that has a different gesture or a different accessory altogether, which technically they did. But this is where we get from confusing to slightly infuriating. And that's going to be this extra wing piece. So they opted and, or rather, 
decided to reuse something that did exist in the prior DC Direct version, but this is one of the areas where McFarlane Toys probably had the option to be able to take something and maybe, I don't know, fix it, and they opted to just include it anyways, which is the wing suit uh, backpack, if you want to call it that. Basically, it's this giant red piece of plastic that fits onto the back via this peg right here, and attached to the sides are the default red wings that Batman Beyond has in his suit. However, I gotta be honest, I kinda hate this thing. It fits onto his back uh, pretty snugly as far as the peg fitting into that hole that's inside of his back. Though you kinda have to futz with it a little bit so that it's as tight as it could be. Once you do that, you'll see right here that it pretty much... I'm sorry, but when you have the wings kind of extended off to the side, it can kind of pass, especially when you extend the arms and then pose them in a variety of ways to be able to look like he's taking flight. But the wings themselves are technically articulated here at a ball joint that's in the middle here. But it's incredibly infuriating. There's just something kind of, like I said, cheap feeling and dainty about these wings. And furthermore, they're kind of loose on said peg. I've already had this wing come off a number of times by just simply handling it. As you can see, kind of like right here. So you can technically rotate the wing in place at one point and then kind of open it and close it as you see before you right about right there. And then even kind of push it off to the side. But say if you want to have like this collapsed kind of tucked away pose you really can't do it so you can kind of have the wings be maybe like this kind of veering off to the side but again it just to me it just looks ugly it, it just looks atrocious i'd rather have the much elongated but still i guess you could say quote unquote tuckable wings that he had on the mcfarland versus whatever we got going on right here or honestly just rather remove it because like i said I got to be honest, this thing, it feels very dainty, very weak. The pegs that are holding the wings in place are very weak. And then on top of that, speaking of pegs, when it comes to swapping the hands out, be careful because a number of times I've already had a couple of scares where the sticks that are used to hold the hands in place inside of the wrist cuffs right there, they're really, really skinny. They, you know, they peg in really ni nicely and they snap in place, but they are very, very frail and skinny. So do be careful when handling those. So you'll see right here that there's a lot that's kind of working against Batman Beyond's favor here. It's rather unfortunate that there's so many things here that I'm kind of nitpicking. And if you wanted to add a little bit of insult to injury, I'm so, so glad that I went ahead and put Bruce Wayne right next to him. Because you'll see right here that scale is still kind of botched here with this DC Direct. Whether it was with its original DC Collectibles release... Or with this new repackaged McFarlane Toys version. Because, god damn, he looks like a little kid. I'm sorry, but compared to the way Bruce Wayne is handling himself over there, I'd rather just have Bruce Wayne come back as being Batman as opposed to whatever whoever's in here. Because that's not Terry McGinnis. Look how short he is compared to Bruce Wayne. I mean, there were... If anything, Bruce was, I think, just a fraction shorter than Terry in that show. But that's only because he was slouching. He was an old man. And if anything, if you want to get a much more respectable scale, I think the McFarlane does a better job of looking a little better. Even though the style is completely different, scale-wise, I think he pairs better with the old man Bruce Wayne right here. I mean, for God's sakes, Ace looks like a mountain lion compared to this DC Direct <laughs> Batman Terry McGinnis. Jesus Christ, look at that. I mean, he could practically ride him into battle. He doesn't need the wingsuit. So, you'll see right here that there's just quite a bit that's working against the this new gold label re-release of the DC Direct or DC Collectibles Batman. And I feel like the pursuit of finding a very quintessential Batman Beyond figure is still kind of on the table. It's still out there for the hunt as far as... Having a brand, whether it be Spin Master or an ACH Figure Arts or just something that's probably a little bit on the pricier side as far as that prosumer tier, tackling something from the Batman Beyond line, specifically Batman, and giving us that quintessential figure. Because right now, McFarlane Toys is probably the closest that it comes to as far as articulation, possibility, that, that, that dynamic look. But if you're looking for something that's faithful to that Bruce Tim style... I guess you can maybe find it here, but just know ahead of time that that's practically all you're going to find. Because I feel like scaling-wise, like I said, I find this to be personally kind of embarrassing of how much shorter he is to old man Bruce. I'd rather him just be back in the suit at this point. And compared to the way that he is on Ace right there, combined with, like I said, the daintiness of whatever this wing backpack piece is. As well as, like I said, the confusing 
uh, nature of the hand accessories and the articulation. At least I can say it wasn't the full 30 bucks, but it still leaves a lot to be desired that should you come across it during these major Walmart hauls, if you are in the need of completing this to go along with your Ace and Bruce Wayne, go ahead and pick it up. But right now, I'd say you could practically skip. And therefore, I give the Batman Beyond DC Direct reissue a 6 out of 10. Have you guys come across it when you're going on your Walmart hunts or any kind of retail hunts for these new McFarlane toys that are out there? Do you think it's about time that maybe McFarlane should give up on the DC Direct line? Because so far, it's been mostly missed rather than hit. But there's been a couple of little gems here and there. What do you guys think? Let me know down below and as always, hit the thumbs up button if you like this video, thumbs down if you did not. A massive thank you to our executive producers at the level 2 tier, Tom Bowling. And you guys know the drill, stay humble, I'll see you later.